Welcome fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic 90s nerds to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, yeah, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon Slime to horror movie slashers, but plenty of stuff in between, like today's video, where we're going to discuss flippin' vintage horror paperback books, and specifically we're going to be doing a top... It was going to be a top 25, but it's wound up being a top 50 countdown list of my favorite freaking vintage horror book covers that I purchased last year in 2021. So we will get into the details of what books that I bought were eligible to be on this list and how, you know, how I kind of did it. I had certain parameters that I was trying to follow, but we'll get into all of that after this short intro and then we'll also Look at the badass covers and just bask in the glory of the awesomeness of vintage horror and some awesome paperbacks from <laughs> All right, see you back here in just a second. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Okay, so most of this top... 50 list won't be exactly ranked per se until we get into the bottom 20 or so definitely the bottom 10 are officially ranked but there's like a area close to the top 10 that are kind of just like you know well this one almost was top 10 this one was almost top 10 so that kind of thing but all these 50 i'm talking about in general today are books that i freaking love and i have been playing around for a long time with the lighting, so I hope the lighting's not too bad. Some of the books are kind of glary, where it reflects my phone back into it, but there's like nothing I can do. I've tried like every single way of putting my lights, I've opened the windows, it's, it's very difficult. So I've tried my best, so hopefully it all looks good. But the parameters that I mentioned, the way I've made my list essentially has to do with I'm only allowing books that I have purchased in 2021 to be eligible to be on this list. So anything that I have hauled recently won't be included on this top 50 list. Another parameter is I am not including any flippin' books that I purchased online. So nothing from Etsy, nothing from eBay, nothing from thrift books, none of that, nothing from my friends. So nothing that anyone sent me, like my great friend Alex sent me this wonderful Friday the 13th book. I couldn't include it because I'm only including things that I found in person at a used bookstore. Nothing from anyone online or nothing that I purchased online. Also, I couldn't include anything that I bought or received from Cameron Chaney from Library Macabre. I also couldn't include anything I bought from David Dodd, a really great, awesome fellow vintage horror collector who I really think he's the sweetest. I love him. So yes, I couldn't include any of that stuff. And, and, and let, let me just say there's a lot of great stuff that I bought online or got from people or bought from certain people. For instance, I know I'm looking right at it. From David Dodd, I bought The Sandman by William W. Johnstone, which is a great cover with like a skeleton on it. I know I also bought Bats by William W. Johnstone from David Dodd. And I bought some things at the end of the year from Cameron that are amazing that I couldn't include. Uh, so there's a lot of things I couldn't include. I'm also not including any vintage YA or vintage middle grade. This is strictly vintage horror for adults. So strictly things that would be considered paperbacks from hell. That is the principle of how I made my flippin' choices for what to include. So these are my favorite covers. So it's not about the story. It's not about books I want to get to to read. These are just purely based off of the aesthetics, essentially. I am picking books that I think are the most badass and the most cool looking that I've found in 2021 at different used bookstores. And I also decided not to include things that I did find in 2021 at used bookstores, but that I didn't haul yet. So there is a very small number of books that I have set aside that are awesome, but I have not shown to anyone in a video before. So all of these books, another parameter is that they've been hauled already before in a video on my channel. And so yes, that's it. That's all of the freaking specifications. Let's get right into it without further ado. Again, we're going from like, you know, I guess 50 to 1. Which, but when we start here, it's not like I'm saying this is number 50. It's just like, this is one of my favorites. I counted out that it's 50 though. But I'm not going to number it until we get into the top 10. Or at least close to it. So here we go. 
All right, this is so difficult, just so you know. In fact, I've kind of grouped them together with similar things. Like, this was so tough. This is like the toughest thing ever. It took me like two hours just to prep for this video. I was looking around my room. My room is a wreck right now. There's paperbacks piled everywhere. So let's just get into it and I'll show you my first few that have made my top 50 list. First up, we have a book by Stephen R. George. And in case you guys just didn't know, Stephen R. George has some amazing freaking horror book covers on his books. Some awesome artists have worked on his books for some reason. So there's a lot of great stuff. So this book specifically was published by Zebra and I have this one in a bag. So I do apologize for the glare, but look at this demonic looking kid hanging on to this ferocious dog. So yes, yes, yes. This had to make the list. I just really like it. I've got a couple of covers with dogs or wolves on them, but this one really just knocks my socks off for some reason. I guess it's the combination of the boy holding him with a chain and the very just mean looking growling pup. So all that together really works well in my opinion. Deadly vengeance. And again, if you look really close at the kid, he's got like glowing eyes. So this whole little stack I'm showing you, the common thread is creepy kids or kids on the cover that are scared. So either creepy kids or scared kids, but I like a lot of covers with kids on them because they just really work well in horror in terms of whether they're scared or scary. They just add an element to the book cover itself that makes it very appealing visually. So this is what all of these have in common. So here's the next one. This is Blood Wings by Stephen Gresham. And this is another fantastic cover. This one's a, a kid that's not demonic, but he's really scared. I guess you could say he's scared, but he barely looks scared. He's like, oh, help, I guess. But there's also like this demonic creature here. So yes, very, very awesome. Flippin' love this so much, so good. You can't really say much more about it, except that it looks really fantastic. Wade's nightmare has come to life, and it's killing everything in his path. So this little demon-winged creature must be his nightmare. Run! And here we have a case of creepy kids on a cover, and this book is just called Kids. And the tagline says, no adult is safe. If you look really close, and I'm sorry this one's in a bag as well, that's why it's extra glary, but you could see this kid has like wrinkles? I don't know. Or just a very scary, scarred face. Either way, it's effective because it is truthfully very creepy to look at. And he's also got red eyes if you look very close. But yes, I love how there's like a little demon tail on the word kids as well. So some of these I like just because of the art. Others, it's like the colors are part of why I like it. And even more than the colors, sometimes the typography of the title. So there's all these elements that work together, in my opinion, that just make a wonderful looking cover sometimes. It's just like sometimes there's a perfect recipe and it all comes together so nicely. All right, so we've gone through three. So we have 47 more books to go. Jeez, and Pete's. This next one is another one with scared kids this time. So we're back to scared kids. This is Hide and Seek by William M. Carney. And this also was published by Zebra. A lot of cheesy covers were published by Zebra, but I seem to like those for some reason. As you can see, these kids are just in test tubes and they're like, yo. I like how you can't even see this one. He's just like an arm here because he's cut off. You can't see the kid in the tube. I don't know. Marvelous, marvelous, marvelous. And again, I have hauled these already. So you can go back and watch all my old hauls if you want to hear more about the story. Because sometimes I would read the back of the book or or stuff of that nature. And a lot of times I do shout out the publishing date. I'm gonna try to just talk vaguely about the covers, not too much about story in this video. So it's really just kind of like, these are some of my favorite covers ever and they're on the top 50 list. I'm not gonna go into too many details, although I kinda am starting off to be a little too long-winded, but we'll see how we go from here. Next up, we have another book by Stephen R. George. This is the second one already. This is Near Dead. And oh my God, just look at it. Just look at it. Freaking scared kid again. Teddy bear on a horror cover. For some reason, I feel like that works quite well. And a creepy ass hand. Get out of my face, dude. That's what I would be saying if I was her. But she's just more shocked, like. <gasps> just really lovely cover. 
and this one's in a bag too because I really like this one it's a treasure and yes that's why it's on my top 50 list just look at it look how lovely it is it's so amazing I love you we're gonna end with our little kids section with two more books that both feature creepy kids on the cover. This one kind of has a creepy kid and a scared kid. It's a dual thing. This is Torment by Stephen R. George. Is there a theme here? I like Stephen R. George book covers. The artist that worked on his books, as I said before, just incredible stuff. Just, I really, I don't know if the books themselves are good. I, just to give you a spoiler, I've never read a Stephen R. George book yet, but I hope to because all the covers, if they're anything like the covers, then I I think it'd be pretty good. All right, so we've got an evil kid grabbing a scared little girl through a mirror. Look at those demonic yellow eyes. Oh, give me your soul. Torment. She's dead, but not gone. All right, here we go. More creepy kids, and these are creepy looking zombie kids to be precise. This is Black Ice by Pat Graverson, and this was published by Zebra. Lots of Zebra here right in the beginning. And this just, I've been actually wanting to read this. I heard mixed things about it, but I still want to read it. I had a prompt for my November readathon that I did last November, and one of the prompts for this readathon I did was read a book featuring creepy kids or scared kids. And I was going to read this one because creepy kids on the cover. However, I went with The Reckoning by Ruby Jean Jensen, which is actually pretty enjoyable. There were some flaws with the book, but still overall great. But nothing can beat this cover. I mean, I don't know what the original The Reckoning looks like, but the uh, new edition of The Reckoning does not hold the candle to this amazing old school horror paperback cover. So, however, traditionally, Ruby Jean Jensen's old books are incredible, so I have to take a look at what The Reckoning looks like. I think there's a doll on the cover of the original The Reckoning. There are just plain kids on the cover of the new edition, but yes, I almost read this one, but went with Ruby Jean Jensen instead. Again, this one's just lovely, though. If you look at it, look at their glowing eyes. That seems to be a common theme we've seen in a few covers here, glowing eyes. And it says, For 70 years, they have waited beneath the lake's icy waters. Now they will take their ghastly revenge. So we just went through seven books, and six of the seven books were a zebra. The seventh book, which was just kids, that is the only non-zebra book we've gone through so far, and this is published by Berkeley. So yes, one Berkeley book and six zebra books so far. All right, so this cover, I mean, to you, there might not be anything special about it. However, to me, I really, really, really like it because of the color palette and something about the juxtaposition of the font of the title and the black trees behind it and the looming house and the bright balloon in the center that really catches your eye. I don't know. I mean, it's not anywhere close to the top 20 of my list, but... I still wanted to put it in the top 50 just because this cover, I just love looking at it, and the back actually adds to it. The back, I love how the title is in blue, and it's just reversed from red here. It's just, like, so cool to flip back and forth. I don't know. That's just me. All right, so this is Dream House by E. Patrick Murray. Dream House. It's where your nightmares live. Uh, I thought they lived in an apartment complex down the street, but I guess not. <laughs> stupid, stupid, stupid. This was published by Diamond. And yeah, I also like the spine as well. Nice stuff here. There you go. You can see it there. Yeah, I don't know. Let's just take a close look real quick before we move on. It's nice and embossed, like most of these covers are. The tree, the flipping creepy baby doll. Like I said, the balloon, a shadow in the window. Haunted looking house. Hell yeah! And some of these books, I can remember where I got them. This, yes, I got in Florida at a bookstore in Jacksonville, which a lot of these books came from, the bookstore in Jacksonville. Other books came from a bookstore where I live here, which is close to New Orleans. Uh, it's a city called Metairie, and that's where a lot of these books came from as well when I first started collecting. Here we have a book that's actually a ripoff, some people have said. In fact, I believe Pauline Dunn is not really the author. It's, I think, a group of sis- I think it's two sisters, right? Is that who this is? Yes, a sister team, Dawn Dunn and Susan Hartzell. They they got sued, I believe, because this is a ripoff of a Kuntz novel. I forgot which one, but uh, I still think the cover of this is badass, nonetheless. And man, the story sounds good. I'll have to read the Kuntz novel and then read this and like compare and contrast and really see how much of a ripoff it is. But I heard it's it's definitely a ripoff. So why I like it, if you see here, there's like eyes in this glowing looking moon. We've got 
arms and I love any covers with hands or arms coming out of the snow so yeah crawling dark really just makes me crawl with excitement because it's so good and who would have figured it's a zebra cover it just it's just really a nice cover in general lots of good colors contrasty colors the red looks great against the black the white looks great against the black as well just I don't know it works it definitely works they laid their eggs of evil and hatched their horror on innocent flesh. Next up, we have two books that have to do with people in the covers wearing Letterman jackets. So the first is The Uprising, and I love the color scheme. We've got demonic-looking teenagers. You can't really go wrong, can you, with demonic teenagers? No. I don't know. They look like zombies to me. And here's the Letterman little sweater. This guy's also wearing a Letterman jacket, so the girl and the guy, Letterman stuff on. And yeah, I just, I like everything about it. I like the darkish pinkish purple against the popping blue. I would, I don't even know what color blue that would be, but it's a beautiful kind of rich blue. It's not a deep blue in terms of dark, dark, but it's just like a very nice blue. I don't know. As you can see, it pops even when I hold it from far away. So yeah, one last look. There's no stopping the Avenging Dead. And the 11th book we're going to talk about is quite a rare book. This is Halo by Chet Day. One of the few books that have made my top 50 favorite book covers list that I actually read. And the book's not that great. The book is nothing compared to the cover. Like, it's okay. Like, it wasn't horrible, horrible. It was a little slow. I expected more horror in general. But let's just say that the cover is like a freaking 10 out of 10, whereas the story is like a 2 out of 10, I guess. I, I really am kind of being harsh on the story. It's not that bad, but it, it kind of drags. But yeah, the cover though, there's like nothing I can complain about about the cover. Here we have Billy Halo, who is the main character in this book. You could see him on the cover. He looks evil, and that's because he's a pretty terrible person. And yeah, he's even holding a skull under his arm, which I love. What a great yearbook picture this would be. Oh, lovely. And we've got almost like the red from the cover dripping over his head like it's blood. Yes, yes, I love this book. This was published by Pocket. And, I don't know, I just think it's a very well-designed cover, and it says, Billy's so awesome, you could just die. Yeah, Billy is not awesome, by the way. He is not. You don't want to run into Billy. So these next few, I'm saying few, it's actually a very large stack of books. These are kind of random. So the covers don't really have anything in common, except that they're just cool. And they're on my list. That's the only thing that they have in common. But in, as far as theme, there's no, you know, no theme here. Like we had the evil Letterman jackets and then we had the creepy kids or scared kids. This is just cool. This is just simple, plain, awesome. All right. First up, a uh, cover that had to make my list. This is the cover for The Forsaken by Stephen Ray Fulgham. Fulham? I don't know. Anyway, I love how this dude is falling from the side of a building. I like the bold typography of the title. And I like how if you look really close, you can tell that he's trying, somebody is trying to reel this dude back in. And it looks like a demon gargoyle creature. So yeah, that's why I like it. Kind of simple compared to some of the others. This one was published by Diamond. And I don't know, there's just something about the way the vantage point is of the book, whereas you can really feel like it's just so well designed, like he's actually fallen towards you. And that's why I like how it's like, you know, smaller at the top. That's how you kind of make somebody think there's perspective is by drawing some stuff small at the top and then making it like, you know, extend out. So they did a good job here, the artist. And I just like the scared guy. I think that's also well designed, the scared guy. I'm sorry, it's so hard to show these in the bags. There's actually a few I took out of the bags, but when I started piling up so many books, I was like, I cannot take them all out of the bag. It would uh, just bother me too much to take them all out. And then I took out like five, but then after that, I was like, no, no, no I'm going to keep the rest in the bag. So I do apologize, but I am uh, really scared about hurting these books. Here we have one of the first books I ever bought. I guess it would probably be one of the first 20 books I bought in person at a used bookstore last year. This is Carlisle Street by T.M. Wright. And T.M. Wright is also someone who has very good covers on his books. And this one is pretty simple, but it's the details that really knock it out of the park and make it a great cover. So if you look close, I'm going to try to show you. It's very difficult. 
but there are some screaming faces here, you can see with my finger, in her freaking hair. That is marvelous. If you Like, here's another one. Look at this. Look at this detail here. And she just looks frightened. And then there's a looming house again. And if you look real close, there's a shadowy figure in the window, kind of lurking. So, yeah. Honestly, this is great. It's almost, like, simple in a way, but very complex at the same time. So there's a lot of things going on. I also really like the colors of the green against the black. It's a very nice shade of green. And so to me, it all works together. This was published by Tor. And yeah, I love this book. And I got it in Metairie at my local bookstore here, which I've since cleaned out. There's really nothing left to find there. At least the last time I went, there was nothing left to find. I might have to go back again, but you know, it doesn't seem like they get a lot of new inventory because it's all donated from people locally, I believe. So yeah. But this one was a great find right when I went there. It's like nobody had been there in 15 years or something. Nobody had looked at their horror stuff in so long. And all of a sudden I come in and I'm like, hell yeah this, hell yeah that. And like, that's how I was able to grow my collection. So you guys might be saying a top 50 is a, such a large list. It is, however, when you consider I have over 400 books, maybe 500 at this point, 50 is really not that much and it was hard to narrow down, trust me. And I'm so glad I had the little stipulations because I'm looking right now. I have a book, Dead Man's Float. I actually got it freaking online, I believe. That one's by Robert Walker. I like love that cover, but I didn't include it because again, I didn't buy it at a bookstore. There's so many I'm looking at that I'm like, I could have put that one, I could have put that one. Even once I did find it at a bookstore, I'm like, oh, I kind of want to include it, but it was just... I had to leave some off. It's just the way it is. By the way, another book I bought online, which was really cheap somehow, Premonition by J.N. Williamson. It's got like this horror wooden roller coaster going through this like wooden like tooth skull. I don't know. Anyway, it's like almost like it reminds you of a horror theme park and that cover is badass. But I bought it online so it could not be included or else it would totally be in my favorite covers list. But yes. All right. That was Carlisle Street. Let's go on. These next few are kind of simple, but personally, I still love them. This is Deliver Us From Evil. I showed this recently when I was talking about books I would like to read. So this is one I'm hoping to get to read this year. Um, I might, you know, see if I can get an ebook version online so that I don't damage my old school copy. But um, in terms of the cover, I mean, come on, look at this. Amazing cover, great detail, very eerie and spooky. This is wonderful. Only one boy can stop the devil from playing God. Hell yeah. This was published by Bantam Books, and I can't wait to read it. Here we have Book of the Dead by John Tiggs. And there's just something about this that I like. I like how the cover looks like a cover of a book. So uh, there's something about that that I like. I like how there's this like sloping down demon creature. Um, I also like that the spine of the book looks like a spine of a hardcover book, just because, like, that's what they were going for in terms of artwork. Just lovely. As you could see, it was published by BMI. Look at some of the details here that was supposed to be on the, quote, book. Here's the creature. Okay, this one barely made the list, but there's something I like about freaking bricks that look like faces or moving bricks and stuff. I don't know. Anyway, the cover of Walkers reminds me a lot of this, but I didn't find Walkers in a bookstore. I think I bought Walkers online, and that's by William W. Johnstone, and I actually read that one. That book was good. I heard from Will Erickson. Check out his blog at Too Much Horror Fiction. It's a great blog. But anyway, uh, he didn't like this book. He said it's terrible. But yeah, as you can see, there's like a brick house that, or it's not really a house, is it? A brick building, and it's it's engulfing these people. And I like how it's got a face. I don't know. Anyway, Platforms by John R. Maxim. This was published by Pocket. And I just purely like the cover. I mean, even if Will Erickson says it's bad, I don't know. There's something about this cover that I enjoy. It's more simple, I will admit that, but uh, still nothing to snuff at in my opinion. Here is another book I talked about somewhat recently. I'm hoping to read this this year. This is The Breeze Horror by Candice Caponegro, and this was published by Onyx, and honestly, the cover is incredible. I just wish I had a better copy because this edition is super beat up. However, I never really thought I would find this one. This was one of the ones that I wanted to find the most last year, and I found it. And this I bought in Mississippi at a used bookstore 
just when Paul and I were driving around, my boyfriend Paul and I, we were kind of uh, going to the beach one day randomly. Mississippi's not that far from where we live, kind of. I mean, it's like an hour, hour and a half. And so we went, and then there was a used bookstore nearby, and I found this there, and a whole bunch of other goodies, and some of the ones that I'm going to talk about today I actually found there as well. But yeah, I cannot wait to see if this is actually good, and if the inside measures up to the cover itself. Here we have Annabelle by Ruby Jean Jensen, and this one makes my list because, um, look at it, it's incredible. It's a doll getting hung. It's basically awesome, and there is some blood, even though it's just a doll. I don't know. Anyway, this is a super rare book, and I can't believe one of my very first trips to the bookstore that is located in Metairie here, I found this. Not only did I find this, I found some other amazing covers that I'm going to show you, like, in those first two or three trips to this bookstore, and I was like, what the hell? How has no one snagged this? Like, again, you horror fans must not have gone to this bookstore, so I was in heaven, and I was able to really build my collection right away with this bookstore. But yeah, this might be my favorite Ruby Jean Jensen cover that I own. I only own a few because her books are super rare and hard to find. However, I'm so glad this one, I have it in my possession because I never freaking imagined I'd just walk into a bookstore and find super rare stuff right off the bat like this, but I did. The next few are just kind of simple. This is The Devil's Court. Uh, man, in the haul, I remember I did a whole bunch of stupid stuff, like I made the basketball, like, talk and sound evil and stuff, but yeah. There's, like, a basketball with, like, an evil-looking face, and that is why I got it, because I was like, The Devil's Court? Actually, it's called On the Devil's Court, but anyway, I was like, what? Is this, like, evil basketball? And oh my god, the back of the book, I did talk about that in my haul. I read some of it. It is so out there and absurd, so yes. The tagline says, Give me a full season of power, and my soul is yours. So this kid must want to play better basketball, so he sells his soul or something. And I do recall that when I read the description during my haul, so yes. Check out that haul. I have a whole playlist of hauls if you guys want to go back and see all of my hauls, which includes a lot more than these 50 books. I mean, there's some hauls where I haul 50 books in a haul, so it's not like you would have seen all of these. I mean, you would have seen all of these, but it's not like you would have seen every book that I've hauled already just from seeing this one video. So if you've missed my hauls, I'm very proud of my hauls, and lots of people say it's their favorite videos of mine, which I'm like, I can't buy books forever. I might run out of things to haul, so I get nervous about that. But yeah, can't go wrong when you find a fun, just cheesy cover like On the Devil's Court. Here we have The School. And I just really liked that there's a bloody apple. I don't know. Obviously, it's beat up. I do recall where I got this one. This one was from, if I'm remembering correctly, and yes, this one was from that bookstore in Jacksonville, Florida. I was evacuated for Hurricane Ida, and I was able to go to this badass, awesome, freaking amazing bookstore where I found a ton of awesome things. This was one of the things I found. I love the font as well of the title. If you look close, it's textured and just really neat. Very, very neat. And this was published by BMI, and it says, The school where evil is taught. Heck yeah, I want to learn some evil, I guess. Found this one at my bookstore here in Metairie. This is White Spider. And I've seen different editions of this with, I think, different colored fonts. But I really like this one. I like how it's kind of shiny green. Like, see, see how it shines there? Yeah. And then we've kind of got an embossed spider web and... A textured spider and he's also got glowing emerald eyes I don't know it's very nice and then if you look at the back there's a shadow spider there awesome stuff it's spun a web of ultimate horror this was published by Leisure and this is written by Joyce Wolf so yes white spider makes the list again it's not near the top but it's in the bottom half of the list and I personally kind of dig it. And just in general, I like the colors, I think, the most, and the texture of it in general. So we have a few covers like these that I would consider simple, but we're almost through the simple covers and coming up to some really insane ones. But there's some things that I like that aren't, like, in-your-face crazy. This one, just the idea of this is, like, a monk statue with blood. That's evil, obviously. I mean, he pretty much looks evil. See his eyes if you kind of look into the light there? Yeah, they look evil. And then, you know, the flippin' blood, yeah. Monastery by Patrick Whalen. Monstrous, unholy, undead. And like I said, there's nothing like insane about this cover. The colors are muted. 
but it's the art itself. It's the idea that this is like a creepy monk statue with vampire fangs. And why? It doesn't go, but it does go. It does work somehow. So yes, lovely stuff. Here we have a cover with Alfred Hitchcock. I wouldn't really consider this a paperback from hell, but the cover is horrific. It's kind of horror-centric, I would say, I guess. And we've got Alfred Hitchcock coming out of a coffin with a whole bunch of reapers carrying him. And it says, happiness is a warm corpse. And so, yes, this one made the list just because it's wonderful. I will say, I couldn't put this on the list because I got it online on Etsy, but this is my favorite Alfred Hitchcock book cover. And it's Happy Death Day. And it's a freaking skeletal birthday cake or death cake. I don't know what you want to call it, but I couldn't include this in the list. It's not technically in the top 50, but it would be if I would have found it in a bookstore. However, I bought this off of Etsy. Here's how I remembered that I bought it off of Etsy. I almost put it on my list and I was like, oh wait, I got that off of Etsy. So yes, this one's an, a, a, a good a good compensation prize, I guess, to put on the list. It's similar, but, but not as cool. Here we have a really great cover. Oh my god, this is Carvings, and I just love everything about it. There's a lot going on, especially a lot of texture, and... Um, I don't know, there's just like so many cool things. I like how kind of she looks evil and I like how there's some claws coming out of here with some blood. Love the flippin' font, how it's shiny and also just the way it kind of points like knives. There's a lot of great things to like about this. It says, The razor sharp claws drew rivers of blood. And this is by John Snellings. Again, let's look at it. Sorry for the focusing. Look how it glows in the light, though. Look how lovely that is when it reflects like that. So nice. Oh my god, yes. All right. Just, this is fantastic. This was published by Leisure. I really like this one quite a bit. All right. This cover is amazing, by the way. This cover is incredible. This is The Lake by R. Carl, I think it's pronounced Lar Largent. And this was published by Leisure. I really love the sea monster on it. Now, it's kind of similar to this other book I own called Surian by William Scholl, as you could see, very similar in style. However, I honestly think the monster on the lake is way better and way cooler. But both covers are pretty badass and pretty awesome. I know I keep saying badass, what's my problem? I, I have been saying that a lot lately, but yeah, both covers are nice. However, this is the one that officially makes the list for sure. The next two I'm going to show you are skeleton covers, and this one is fantastic. Oh my god, I love this one. This is Sight Unseen by Andrew Niederman. Andrew Niederman also has some fantastic covers on his books. Ugh, so good. This was published by Zebra. A lot of skeleton covers are published by Zebra. Look, look, look! Freaking fortune telling skeleton with a freaking scared kid in the whatever uh, crystal ball. And it says, He was blessed and cursed with the power to see into the future. Here we have Evil Eye. And this one is definitely, you see, look at this nice font here. This is definitely a paperback from hell book. In terms of it was featured in the book, Paperbacks from Hell. This was published by Leisure. It's written by Aaron M. Ely, I think. Anyway, this is a fantastic cover. Lots of people know about this cover. I had it included on the list because the reason so many people like and want this cover is because it's pretty scary, it's pretty amazing, and it is pretty detailed. There are fangs dripping with blood, and if you look really closely at the eye in the skeletal face, it's just, ah, uh, chef's kiss in terms of colors and stuff. It's so hard to show you because of glare, but look at this. Next up, we have some of my favorite types of covers. Freaking covers with hands coming out of graves or just close-ups of hands. I love these covers so freaking much. This is Out of the Night by Patrick Whalen. And yes, he's the same author as that book Monastery that I showed you, but this cover is more badass. So this is closer towards my number one spot on this top 50 list. But yes, I was so ecstatic when I found this. Oh my god, just look at it. Just everything about this works. And it says, A small California town vowed to bury its past, but the legacy of evil will not rest in peace. 
So you might have guessed, yes, the theme is hands for these next few. And this is one of my favorites, if only there wasn't this crease. But it is what it is. I was just happy to find this. This is kind of a, a very rare one. This is Dark Miracle, and this was by Stephen R. George. He makes another appearance here. Of course, this is a zebra book, and it's incredible. I love this girl dressed up like Sunday, you know, it's Sunday in her Sunday best. She's got a pink dress, some like nice black freaking shoes, a bow, and then there's this creepy hand saying, I'm gonna get you. Sometimes death can be a blessing. Can it though? I don't know. That's scary. But yeah, this is wonderful. Wonderful cover. Here we have a kind of subdued cover in terms of color palette. However, I love the hand knocking on the door here. This is called the Rivard House. I think that's how you pronounce it. I think it's an R. It's hard to read because it's in script. But yes, Abandon Hope, All Who Enter Here. Lovely. I'm very happy to own this one. I think I saw recently that Cameron got this book too. This is a great book. This was published by Leisure. Look at all the detail on this door. And on the knocker itself, there's some leaves. Great stuff here. I believe this is one of the books I got from Florida, and it is. And I think the last one, Dark Miracle, was also from Florida too. Two more books with flipping hands on the cover. This one's a skeletal hand. And yeah, there's a Ouija board as well. So it's like double freaking awesomeness on the same cover. This is Hellboard by Dana Reed. And it was published by Leisure. Good stuff here. Let's just take a close look real quick. You can see the board in the hand. Hell yeah. Hellboard. Ouija is a big thing in a lot of these old school horror books. Play if you dare. You have nothing to lose, but you're a mortal soul. All right, here we have another amazing freaking cover with a skeletal hand. This one's reaching up from out of a grave. Here's a gold me medallion, and it's embossed and really lovely here. It's hard to see. Yeah, there we go. See, it's kind of like a demon on that talisman. And it almost feels like just so so textured but it also seems to actually really glow like it's perfect the way this plays with light it's a very well designed cover then we've got in big letters death day to possess the amulet is to be possessed by evil beyond imagining this was published by leisure as well all right these next two i am showing essentially because i like the inner artwork and this one specifically i also like how it wraps around as you could see let me kind of try without hurting it to show you. Look at this. It wraps around to be a whole face. Obviously this is a red eye. This is a blue eye. Effigies. This is a lovely cover. And on the inside, we also see more. Just great, great cover. Again, it's on this list because of just like all the elements, especially the inner artwork here. Great stuff. This was by William K. Wells, and this was published by Dell. And it's not even classified on the spine as a horror book. It says fiction. But I think it does have to do with possession. It says, Born in darkness, they will walk abroad in daylight. They are coming. The devil's own. All right, another super rare book that I did find in person. I can't even believe that I found this. Found it at the bookstore close to my home in Metairie. Uh, one of the first times I went out to start looking for books and I found this really rare cover. This is the Gilgul and yes, it's super, super, super rare. And people try to find this and you can find it online really expensive when you do find a copy. This was published by Pinnacle. Again, I'm just so lucky to have this, hence why it's in the bag. I don't like to take it out the bag. What I really love about it, though, is not the cover itself, but also the step back art, which I don't want to take it out of the bag to show you. But I will show you a picture of the step back art. And, you know, the cover, along with that inner artwork, all together makes this a wonderful choice to be on my top 50 horror book covers list. All right, and we're almost into the top 10, but before we get into the official top 10, I'm gonna show you, and these are still a part of my top 50 list, but these were almost, almost on the list, like near the end of the list at number 10. But uh, yeah, so these are things that I considered putting in my top 10, but it just missed out, you know, because I was like, I gotta put other stuff in front of it. So yes, these are almost in the top 10, but still on the top 50. First up is Cat's Eye by William W. Johnstone, and this is more of a sentimental pick 
and that's why it's on my list, kind of, because I found this in Texas, and it was the very, very first Pure Wreck from Hell that I ever bought in person, and I was even surprised to find any at this bookstore in Texas, and again, I discovered the bookstore in Texas before my own local bookstore, because it was just when I was starting to get into going to used bookstores, and I found this, and it was published by Zebra, as you could probably tell, just zebra covers are kind of out there and crazy and so this is definitely a crazy book cover and it's marvelous and that's why I had to put it on my overall top 50 list but it almost made the top 10 however there were other books I had to put ahead of it another book that almost made it into the top 10 but it still falls in my top 50 this is Dearest by Peter Loran and this was published by Stein and Day and I just love it because it's got a wrapped up face. I love covers that have bandaged faces on them. In fact, I have two more that I'm looking at right now that did not make my top 50 list. The other two are Pan and Face Maker. And they almost made it, but they did not. Out of the three bandaged face covers I have, Dearest is my favorite because, I mean, just look at this. And it's very textured. It's just a well-designed cover. And I really love, like, the red font against the black background and really the face pops out at you and I think that's the most important part and it's really not even described as a horror book but I still had to put it on my list and I'm sure it actually is horrific uh, I haven't read it yet but yes I'd love to a book that I got near the end of 2021 that almost made it into the top 10 but still falls on the li this list this is one of the only Charles L. Grant books that I have on this list however I have a lot of great Charles L. Grant books in general. Some I've gotten online, but a lot I've gotten in person. I just wanted to really pick one. This is The Black Carousel, and I really like it just because it's got like this crazy jester on this flippin' carousel horse body here. It's just a great cover. It's a lovely cover, and this book was not cheap. Some of these books that I'm showing you I got for like two bucks, or three, or you know, at most six bucks. This one was more than six bucks, and I kind of felt weird about getting it, but I got this one from Seattle, some bookstore in Seattle, and I'm still glad I purchased it, though, because I haven't seen it anywhere else, and I actually see a lot of Charles Grant books places, but not this one ever, except for the place in Seattle, so I had to pick it up. Another book that almost made the top 10 list, but at least it's on the top 50, is Toyland, and this is by Florence Raim, or Raimi, and yeah, I just, there's skeleton flipping toy soldiers on the cover and a mean, angry looking girl with some super crazy dark circles under her eyes. So yes, let's take a look. This was published by Leisure. Look at those dark circles. Uh, she's really not well rested. And really what shines here are the toy soldiers that are skeletons. Freaking right, freaking right. Ah, uh, another wonderful cover. This is Playmates by J.N. Williamson. There are multiple editions of this book, but I like this one. You could see these, like, creepy-looking, like, leprechaun dudes. Uh, it looks like one of those things you cut out of construction paper. However, up here where it's being cut, it really looks like blood. Amazing. This was published by Leisure, and it says on the back, Nightmares can become real if you believe. Troy believed. Well, Troy, maybe you shouldn't have believed. Freaking, you shouldn't have believed at all. Because now you're probably in for some trouble. Yeah, this is a great freaking cover. It had to make my top 50, and it almost made my top 10, but not quite. All right, and last book before we get into the official top 10, this is Entity by flippin' Nina Mandelic. And this one is really unique cover. It was published by Diamond, and it says, They're fighting a war at Fort Riley, the living versus the dead. And really what makes this cover incredible and makes it worthy to be on this list are the small details on the cover. And really, it's going to be hard to show you, but I'm going to try, okay? So bear with me here as the lighting and phone adjusts. You could see his freaking face. We've got like muscles underneath, like a glass eye, freaking cracked skin. We've got a freaking tear in his shirt that looks like a heart. And we've also got more torn away skin with like a freaking muscular arm underneath. It almost looks like robotic, but I think it's like muscles and stuff. There are like little tattoos, which is embossed here. Oh, it's just incredible in terms of detail. And then there's a heart in his flipping chest here which is hard to see. Again, I'm losing light. I'm gonna have to readjust soon. All right, again, Entity. And the font itself too, by the way, just to show you. Yes, look at this. Lovely. 
All right, number 10 on my top 50 list is The Cartoonist by Sean Costello. And I shared this recently in a video about 22 books that I want to read for 2022. This is one of the books that I'd like to get to this year in terms of reading. But separate and apart from that, yes, I'm intrigued by the story, but look at this freaking awesome cover. We've got a guy who looks like a cartoonist. He's got like this dripping paintbrush and there's a skull chilling on the bookcase behind him. And it's just awesome. This was published by Pocket. And let's take a close look if we can. Sorry for the glare, but look at this. Yes, yes, yes. Look at the wonderful colors on the title. There's that skull. Number nine, a book with a hand on the cover and it's a severed freaking hand with flipping claws in a scientific setting, almost human. And it says, Bread to kill. Yes, yes, yes. A bone-chilling new tale of horror from James V. Smith Jr. Yes, this was published by Dell. One more look here. One of my very favorite covers, and that's why it lands at number nine. Number eight on my list. Look at this artwork. Look at it. This is one of my favorites. It is featured in Paperbacks from Hell. This is Deadly Nature by V.M. Thompson. This was published by Zebra. There is some skeletal ele element here of this like polar bear looking thing. I don't know. But anyway, there's also a scared kid like, uh, I'm in a mouth. I don't know. This has everything you could want in a horror cover. The color, juxtaposition, the scared kid, the blood, the skeleton part of the freaking face of that wolf bear thing. I don't know. It's got everything. It's got everything. It says, The woods bred in unnatural evil. Deadly nature. Number seven on my list. Dress up. Look at this. Another scared kid. Like I told you guys, I do like scared kids on covers. But this one's even cooler. It's got like a hand coming out of a dresser drawer. It's got a creepy face smashing out of a mirror. The freaking font is incredible. The the flippin' mirror is embossed and has a lot of wonderful detail. Let me try to... There you go. Look at that. Like a winged creature here. Yes! Great stuff here, in my opinion. This definitely deserves to be on my list, and it's number seven. More Creepy Hands. This is number six on my list of top 50 horror novel covers, and this would be Death Song. And I just really love the hands reaching out of this frickin' piano. And this piano is also kind of going crazy over here. I don't know. This is just really awesome. And I love the color of the font. This was published by Leisure and it says, Its melody was evil. Its rhythm, the most destructive force on earth. Wow. I didn't know rhythm could really be destructive, but apparently so. And it's got some great shadow details, you know, shadows kind of brushing over the fingers here. Just good stuff. Well designed. Now we're into my top five. I can't believe we're actually here. This video is long, I'm sorry. All right, number five, tricycle. I remember when I freaking hauled this, I had like all these funny things to say. Anyway, you can't go wrong with a freaking skeleton riding a tricycle. And uh, this was published by Pocket. You might think it would have been published by Zebra because there is a skeleton on the cover, but no, alas. It is Pocket. And it says, When little Simon plays with fire, the game becomes a funeral. And we've got, like, just, he's in his little winter clothes. Oh, it's, it's lovely. Yes, I love this. And then there's a really nice, simple font on the bottom. Silvery. Good stuff. Definitely should be on the list for sure. Yes, number five. Number four, a book I found in Mississippi at the used bookstore. This is a book by William W. Johnstone. This is The Devil's Laughter, and it's part of this whole series of books that Johnstone did. It's like the Devil series or something. There's quite a few of the books. I only have, I think, two or three at the most, but when I found this one in Mississippi, I freaked out. One thing I really love about it, if you look close, is the color of the text on the cover itself. Just love this blue, and I've kind of talked about this blue on other covers in this very video today but what really obviously is eye-catching is this clown and you guys might have noticed I have empty spots back here on my little display 
and that's because like this book is usually back there, Tricycle's usually back there. However, I took a lot of books down to film this video. So yes, that's why this book is not looming from behind me. It's in my hand. And this is number four on my top 50, you know, favorite vintage horror book cover list. Number three, this is Ice Orchards by Elena Yates Yulo. At 10 degrees below zero, fear is still blood hot. And let me just show you a little bit of the details here. Look at this face. Freaking chopped off, freaking head, blood, frozen, kind of glittery looking. Great stuff. This cover's a little beat up. I wish it was in perfect condition. However, it's not. This was published by Star, and I'm just happy to have it. Yeah. You guys know it's amazing. It's incredible. It's a really great cover, and that's why I freaking have it so high up on my list. It's officially number three, as I said. All right, we're in the top two. Dun, 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 dun. All right, number two, Sleep. Uh, I hauled this quite a while ago. I was so happy to find this. I know I got it in a different state. I just can't remember which state I got this in. Uh, obviously, there's all these demonic creatures kind of surrounding this guy when he's asleep. I have this one in a bag, so it's so hard to get the details, you know, close up. But, oh, look at this guy down here. This green guy. Again, red demon dude. I don't know, grayish demon dude. Big dude around this guy's sleeping head. Sleep. And one of the things that I love the most about it is the font. The color and just the way it's shaped. Everything about this cover works for me. And it says... There is no rest in slumber. Behind closed eyes, a monstrous evil waits and waits and kills. So yeah, this also, by the way, published by Paper Jacks. This is so close to being number one. I just love everything about it, specifically the colors, I think is what I like about it the most. Something about it. All right, and number one, and if you've been following me for a long time, this might not be any surprise. This is another book that I found very early on in my collecting, and this was at my local bookstore, and it's one of the best books in terms of condition that I own, and this is... I, like, I really think you guys are going to know because in the hall, I was like, this is my favorite uh, book cover that I own. And that was like a year ago when I first started collecting. And it's still my favorite. So at number one, we have Stallion. And just look at this skeletal horse. And that's why it's number one. Look at it. Incredible. I'm losing the light, but I, I think you could see the details pretty well. This cover was done by an artist. His name is Kirk Reinhardt. And the funny thing is, he did the cover for Clive Barker's The Hellbound Heart. And he did a couple of other things, too, of course. But um, he actually did a lot of covers for Clive Barker. But I like this cover better than any pictures of other covers I've seen of his. This is so amazing. And, of course, the font is also awesome. In fact, is there something with me with S's? Like, look, both my number one and my t number two, it feels like the typography is very similar here in terms of just the... The titles. I don't know. Anyway, yes, number one and number two. So amazing. This had to be number one, though. Oh, after all this time, it's still number one. The demon horse thing has like a red eye. Again, I'm not taking it out of the bag, so I'm sorry. I just don't want to hurt it. Yes, that's my list. Oh god, that was painful because it was so hard to freaking leave things out. Oh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know this has been a long video. Comment your favorite cover that I've shown below, or you know, what is your favorite cover that you own that's a vintage horror paperback? I want to thank you once again for watching. Please leave a comment. Like I said, that really helps with the analytics. I know it seems silly to you guys, but when you're trying to grow a channel, engagement really really helps and leaving a like really helps so if you like the video please give a thumbs up because it'll help freaking appease the youtube freaking gods because uh otherwise they won't be in my favor so please help me out there and i would really appreciate it but overall regardless i appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this long ass video and it's been fun I think I've really enjoyed looking at some of these covers that I've collected over the last year. What will make my top 25 or top 50 or top whatever list of 2022? Who knows? I guess we'll have to wait and see. But for this time, guys, that's it for me. Until next time, you know what you can do. I say it each time. Keep on killing it. Thank you, guys.